Today I want to show you this UPS from GoldenMate, which has something different than other UPSs have. Uh, be sure to stick around, I'll explain why it's different, and I'll open, the, open this UPS up and show you what's inside. But first, just in case you're not familiar with what a UPS is, it stands for Uninterruptible Power Supply. In a typical home, a UPS is plugged into the, your outlet in the wall, and you plug your devices, critical devices in, such as computers, modems, routers, maybe even a CPAP machine. You plug it into the, to the, the UPS, and if the power goes out, there's a battery inside that actually powers that equipment until the power comes back on. Uh, it, for how long it powers that device is totally up to what all you have plugged into it. So what makes this UPS different? Well, someone finally made a UPS with a lithium iron phosphate battery. I'm not sure if this is actually the first one UPS with a lithium iron phosphate battery, but I've been looking around and I really am only finding this one. Lithium iron phosphate batteries will have a much longer lifespan than lead acid batteries, which you find in normal UPSs. Uh, Golden Mate states that this battery in the UPS will last more than 10 years, which is typical for a lithium iron phosphate battery. Also, lead acid batteries can only be discharged down to 50% before they start damaging the batteries, if you go below 50%. But lithium, lithium iron phosphate batteries can be used all the way down to zero without any damage at all. Uh, this UPS is a 1000 voltage amp or 800 watt uh, UPS with four outlets and all four uh, outlets have surge protection and battery backup protection. Golden Mate does make a version of this with eight outlets on the back. The battery in this UPS is a 256 watt hour battery. For those of you that watch my channel, I do a lot of battery reviews. Uh, you probably know what that means, but for, lo for those of you new to battery specifications, that basically means that theoretically this UPS uh, fully charged could power devices drawing 256 watts for one hour. But when the UPS is having to draw power from the battery, it does take some energy to convert that DC current in the battery to AC current to power the devices. And that'll take probably just under 20 watts to do that. Uh, the equipment I plan to use with this UPS draws just under 100 watts. So theoretically, if the power goes out, uh, this UPS should be able to power those devices for just under two and a half hours. Let me quickly cover the outside of the UPS. Um, it's not plugged in currently, so you may hear it beeping. It's a very quiet beep. Uh, I'm not sure you could even hear it if you were in another room. Uh, but here's the LCD display and the power button. I just turned it on. It, this screen was blinking until I turned it on. We have a green status and a red status. And then depending on if they're blinking or flickering, they mean different things. There's a page in the owner's manual that does explain that. Let's look quickly at the side. Golden Mate. Here's the back. We have four AC outputs. We have the AC input. Uh, this is the overload switch. I'm assuming if you overload it, that, that will trip and you'll have to push it to reset. This is a little communications port. It didn't come with, it did not come with a, uh, a wire or anything, but it's used for something, maybe programming it from at the factory. Let's go back to the, let's go back to the display, LCD display. So as I mentioned, it's not currently plugged in. So it's showing we have 10 watts coming out of the battery. I'm assuming that's to power the inverter inside. Uh, we have about 75% charge roughly. Uh, the output of the inverter is 120 volts. Uh, there's currently no input to show how much is coming in. Uh, I think there's a little status symbol right there when we plug it in. So let me let me plug it in and get it charging and let's see how it changes. Okay. It's plugged in. Let's see here. So I heard a click. If you can see there, the little, looks like a little power tower right there that's showing that it's plugged in to the grid. We are coming in at 118 volts from grid. Output is 118 volts. It's just passing through. And we're now using 17 watts to power the inverter. But we have no load at all in there. So let me plug in a little, I have a little, a little battery over here I'm going to just plug in to charge and let's see what happens when we plug that in. It should be a very low amount of watts. So it's only using 10 watts to charge that battery, so not much. But that is the LCD display, uh, LCD display screen there. Okay, I'm going to do a little testing here. I just want to show you the setup first. So first I'll show you the screen, the screen on the UPS here. It's showing 118 volts being passed through. 
17 watts being drawn out of the battery just to run the inverter. Nothing's plugged in at the moment except for the oscilloscope, which is not using anything. I have the oscilloscope set up here. <coughs> I have a wire plugged into the back, and the oscilloscope is connected here to the, the end, other end, which is live electricity. I have to be careful. And the UPS is plugged in to uh, the grid power here. So that's the setup. Okay, so first let's look at the sine wave. So if I zoom in, well first let's look at the bottom left here. As you can see it's showing 60 hertz. It bounces around a little bit, but it's pretty much right at 60 hertz as it should be. And this is being, this is a pass through by the way. So if you notice the top of the sine wave is a little bit chopped off. That's because, that's just the way it's coming in through the grid. Here, let me, uh, let me unplug the UPS to be careful I'll touch that live wire and I'll show you that that actually straightens up when the inverter kicks in. Okay, now it's running off the inverter and the UPS. As you can see, the sine wave cleaned up a lot. So it's actually cleaner than my grid power here at the house. Now I'm going to plug it back in now. I don't know if you can hear the beep, but it's very quiet. So that's it does produce a pure sine wave whenever uh, it's running off inverter. So that's good. So I've unplugged the oscilloscope and that live wire, and now I just have a, an extension cord, extension cord plugged into the back, and uh, the multimeter here plugged into the extension cord. And we are reading 120, a little over 120 volts. But now the UPS is showing only 118 or 19 coming in and out. So it does bounce around a little bit. But I did uh, confirm with another multimeter that it was showing 119 when this one was showing 118. So it's they're all very close. So now I'm going to unplug the uh, UPS from the wall. Let's see what happens to the voltage when I do that. You can see it kind of dropped there to like 112 for just a moment while everything was switching over to UPS mode. And now we're showing down here 119 output. This is showing 120. So it did drop a little bit when it switched over. I'm going to try that again with a little bit of a load and see what happens. Okay, I have a battery charger plugged into the back of the Orion UPS right now. And I've got the battery charger hooked up to the Orion 1000 battery I just recently reviewed. And I'm going to hook up the battery charger and then unplug the UPS from the wall. And let's see what the voltage does when that happens. So first I'm going to charge the battery from the UPS. And just quickly, just look down here at what it's doing. It's drawing 312 watts, 310 watts. So let's go back to the voltage here. And just watch this as I unplug it from the wall, the UPS from the wall. I think I saw 109, so just a little under 110. And of course, it's switching over less than 20 milliseconds. I'm getting ready to test if it's fast enough. That's my next test. Okay, so I'm about a meter away, just around three feet, and the fans are running on the UP, go to my UPS, let's see how quiet it is. That's quiet. Okay, so I'm going to do a test here to see if this old laptop can stay powered without a battery while I unplug it, the UPS from the grid. That's where the battery used to be in the bottom there. And it's no longer plugged in, so if this UPS is fast enough to switch over from grid to backup power, then we're good. Let's, let's just show what the screen shows down here right now. It looks like we're showing, sorry here, um, 119 volts coming in from the grid. It's just passing through, and we're using 41 watts, now 29, to pretty much, I believe, just probably to charge the battery on the laptop. Oh, there's no battery in the laptop. So to just power the laptop itself. So let's, let's do the test here. So I'm going to unplug the UPS from the grid and let's see if this laptop stays on and it worked and we'll plug it back in so let everything reset okay I heard a click I see that we now have input from the grid 119 volts so let's test it again one two three 
Okay, worked again. And we'll test it one more time. Okay, the UPS is clicked. We're back into input from the grid. 120 volts, 119 volts now. And drawing power to power the laptop. So I'm going to test it one last time here. Unplugging the UPS from the grid. One, two, three. Okay, good. It worked fine. Okay, I'm getting ready to open up the the Golden Mate UPS here, and I just pried back this little rubberized foot here, and there are two little Phillips screw screws there, and there should be two over there. I'll take those out and pull this case off. It's a quick spin around here. I forgot the cover off. Nothing really to see on this side. Okay, so as you can see here, these are cylindrical lithium iron phosphate cells in there. Not prismatic. And Orion seems, I mean Orion's, um, in the Orion battery review I just did from Golden Mate, they all, it also had cylindrical cells. Here's actually low charge protection, uh, low temperature charging protection sensors here. If the battery gets, if the temperature gets below freezing, these will keep the battery from being charged because lithium iron phosphate can be damaged if charged in below freezing temperatures. Underneath the bottom there of the battery, if you look right under the battery, that is the BMS. That stands for battery management system. That, ha that has all the protections of the battery that keeps it from being dam damaged and keeps it safe for your use. And behind here should be the inverter. I'll take this off and take a look at that. Okay, you've got the screws taken off that cover. And underneath here is the inverter. Now, I'm not going to take this apart any further. I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit what the inverter looks like under here there's the exhaust the cooling fan here on this end and all the other components of the inverter before i give my final thoughts on this ups i would first like to thank golden mate for sending me this ups free of charge for my honest review no strings attached no payment just an honest review and that's what you will always get from me so what are my final thoughts well, I don't really have a lot to say. There are not really any fancy features on this UPS. It's just a basic UPS that works. Uh, the UPS performed well in my testing. Nothing concerned me there. But I do really love that someone finally put a lithium iron phosphate battery in a UPS. Uh, this battery should last well over 10 years, unlike lead acid batteries. Uh, so based on my testing, I can recommend this UPS. Uh, this is the first review I've actually done on a UPS, and I can only think of one feature that I wish it did have and that would be a mute button for whenever the power goes out and the UPS is powering the equipment. Typical UPSs have a very obnoxious beep that actually scares my dogs and creates a lot of turmoil in my house whenever the power goes out. But with UP this UPS the beep is actually very quiet. I don't think that would bother the dogs too much but it is still a feature I would like to see. I will be using this UPS every day and if anything changes my opinion of it I'll be sure to post a follow-up video. Golden Mate does provide a five-year warranty with this UPS. And at the time I'm filming this, you can pick it up for $169 with free shipping. I will put a link to that to the website below and a discount code, which you, will save you an additional 10%. Well, that should do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video review, and thank you for watching and supporting my channel.